two things. One, Mr. Fraser, I commend you wholeheartedly for doing what you're doing. I know personally how hard it is, um, at least from the election part of it. I can't even imagine what you're going through behind the, the desk. So I commend you for sticking forward with your promises. Um, and everything you mentioned is exactly what I've heard when I was running for mayor and when I pushed the petition. Those are the exact things. People were fully in support of the project, but they did not like this funding option. And that's all that people wanted to have to say. Mayor Fougere, the former mayor of Fiaco, continually go out there and other councillors continually go out there and keep telling people. They don't listen to people, they don't ask people, they tell people that um, the pe people that are signing the petition, they're anti-stadium, they're anti-progress, they're anti regina which was a complete and utter wrong statement. So that, I just want to thank you very much for putting out there because that's a familiar thing and the unfortunate part is I just found out today that there's several probably thousands of people that have the same thing because uh, we were, or Star Phoenix reporter Les McPherson, who's well known in South Sun, uh, published an article in September that he felt that he was the only one, and then legitimately felt that he was the only one that wanted to save our current stadium. Someone that high up in the, in the organization, that well respected and well known, feels that he's the only one. How many other people are out there the same, the same way? I felt that way when I was running the campaign, and I know that, that that's not the reality of it. Now, Mr. Hawkins, my question to you is, you say you didn't hear a negative word at all on the, on the doorstep. How is that? Everybody else admitted that they've heard at least something negative, and at least they rebutted it with, with an argument. You're telling me that you actually didn't hear anybody say, I don't want this project, or I want a different funding model? I believe I said that I thought that the strong majority of the voters in Ward 2 on the, on the doorstep were in support of the stadium, like by election, uh, justifies what I heard on the doorstep. Okay. Thank you. Another question? Uh, yeah. Uh, here's a question for Mr. Hopkins. Um, you said that the city is getting a $278.2 million stadium for $73 million and that this is a good deal, but uh, Regina taxpayers are going to have to pay $261.9 million. And if you look at it from that perspective, it doesn't sound like quite such a good deal. I'm glad for this question. And it's the reason I started my remarks by saying that I think that the people of Regina want a stadium. We're going to pay for a stadium one way or another. Uh, we pay for the old stadium now through high maintenance fees and high maintenance costs. And sooner or later, sooner I think, that old stadium is no longer going to be fit uh, as a stadium. It just isn't, uh, isn't built up to standards that uh, uh, are, going to, are going to be adequate, especially in terms of accessibility and environmental standards. And uh, so sooner or later, we're going to be paying. Given that, given that, I think that this deal at this time is a good deal. I think if we wait, as they waited in Moose Jaw for the uh, ice rink, I think if we wait, we're going to find ourselves in 10 or 15 years having poured money into this facility, having finally got to a facility that could no longer be patched up, and being faced with the reality of building a new facility and the cost of the city of Regina as taxpayers at that point is going to be much higher. Uh, question in the back. Um, yeah. You mentioned that the Rock Riders are going to be the main people to be using it, the primary group. I was just wondering what your guys' thoughts are on, in regards to why the Rock Riders are contributing what could be argued the least amount of money to the stadium. If they're going to be the primary users. Well, let me start, and then, then Sean will have remarks that may be a little different. I think the Rough Riders are contributing what they can afford. Uh, and I want to just note something about the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First of all, by saying that, at some risk to myself, I suppose, I grew up in Dauphin, Manitoba, so I have some sympathy for the Blue Bombers, despite the, uh, <laughs> despite the performance of the field of late. But, uh, it's not correct, really, to say that they're contributing $80 million. What that $80 million is, is money funneled back from the province through the Bombers to the uh, stadium project. The Bombers are in debt. They were in debt in their old stadium. The province said to the Bombers, we'll write off your debt. That writing off of the debt in the old stadium, the amount they owe the old stadium, has enabled them, on paper at least, to put up money for the new stadium. So these are hard figures to get your head around. but. 
Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the Bombers don't have $80 million to give anybody, and I believe the Rough Riders are a richer team. I also believe that they are contributing a fair amount. This is not chump change, $25 million plus another fifteen for uh, at least hold improvements. Uh, so I think that they're contributing a fair amount what they're able to contribute. I also believe that as the stadium gets built, more corporate sponsorship will come forward. But I don't want to kid around here. There, I think there's one stadium on the continent, maybe two, but I think there's only one in New York that uh, pays for itself through the private uh, purse uh, on its own. The stadia are just, are just part of infrastructures in cities that uh, require a large-scale public contribution. Thank you. Is there a question? I unfortunately can't, can't speak to the financial situation of the other riders. I just don't, I just don't know what it is. Um, I guess, again, my, my thought would be I, I get the argument that, that um, a stadium, you know, there should be some public element to it, the same as a bus. Uh, a transit system is a service, right? It's not something that ever makes money. When you go to Vancouver and you have to wait two buses to get on a bus, that's a system that's still, it, it's a service. It's not a, a moneymaker. So, I, I don't, uh, you know, it's not my thought that the riders should have to pay the full bill or something, but I, uh, I, I, not knowing their books, I, I would just question, is this a fair amount to them? It, it, it might be. It might be that the riders, uh, this is all they can afford. I don't know that, but I feel that hasn't really particularly been part of the public uh, conversation with this. Yeah, sure. Sure. No problem. I have a question for both councillors. Um, Councilor Fraser is the only one who has voted against the current uh, stadium proposal, but I, I, I think it's fair to say the opposition to the current stadium proposal extends beyond just your ward. So it suggests to me, or does fair to suggest that maybe the people of Regina should have the chance to vote up or down uh, on a referendum question on the stadium? Um, I think other cities have done it with similar stadium projects. I think, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 70s in Regina for upgrading the previous stadium, there was a, a, an open kind of referendum question. So would either of you support uh, a motion authorizing a referendum for the city of Regina? Oh, and why or why not? So, okay, I, uh, I, beyond the regular ego problems and stuff that people who are interested in politics suffer from, I have a hobby interest in, in uh, just democratic process, you know, that's something, I like watching baseball, I like talking about elections and that sort of thing. And um, as far as re referendum goes, I actually think referendums are, uh, a great tool for democracy. They're, they're more direct input um, than electing people every four years and, and kicking us out or keeping us in based on that. You know, uh, some places in, in the states, you might go to vote for uh, you know, a public election. There might be 20, 20 direct bills that you can vote uh, for against them. You know? uh, so I think uh, referendums are, are a great thing. I, I think we do have a process in place for that. Uh, so the petition that was raised in the fall, there was over just over 10,000 signatures, which, which that's no, in a city of 20,000, or sorry, 200,000 people, not quite 200,000 people, that's that's significant, I think, you know. The threshold is, uh, would have been about 20,000. So I feel that there is a process in place and that process wasn't reached. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think that we need to circumvent the process, maybe changing the process in the future, maybe to say, well, I mean, 10,000 signatures, I mean, anything I've been involved in that's trying to engage people. I mean, I, I worked hard on a campaign for, or, you know, we both worked hard on the campaigns for, for months, and you know, in the end, I think I had maybe 2,000, two or just over 2,000 people vote for me. You know, to, to gather 10,000 signatures to me, that seems significant. And I like the idea of having more referendums. I think it would be great if uh, maybe as part of the regular election cycle, maybe we vote on a few things. Maybe it's a big infrastructure project like this. Maybe it's uh, outdoor swimming pools is an issue right now. Maybe whatever those things are, I, I think the more that we can do, the better. But I don't necessarily think that we circumvent the process of that. Let's change the process, I think, would be 